Investor's Edge with Gary Kaltbaum. Straight talk about you and your money. Now from the BizTalk studios, here is Gary Kaltbaum. And welcome once again to Investor's Edge. I'm Gary Kaltbaum, your host. Hey, thanks for being with us today. Glad you're here, ladies and gentlemen. Happy that you are listening. It's February 1, 2024. This is the sore throat edition of Investor's Edge. You know, you ever get one of those that just lingers? That's what I got. Non-COVID, that's the new lingo, by the way. Non-COVID, just sore throat edition of Investor's Edge. After I was done yesterday with radio, I did a webcast and I was just coughing up a storm. Isn't that a great way to introduce a show? But most importantly, this is serious talk on everything that affects you. The economy, markets, unemployment, taxes, deficit spending, scams, shams, corruption, you name it, we cover it. And if you do not get this radio show in your city, we'll post it at GaryK.com. We'll also post it on all the podcast sites and our Twitter feed, which is now X. And if you don't follow us on X or Twitter, you probably should go there, put our name in, go check it out. And of course, you can email me, just be nice. Thank you. You know, I've been doing a bunch on immigration here, and I got this one joker accuses me of anti-immigrant racism and all that. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about, buddy? Just remember where we stand. We completely stand side by side with immigrants, immigration and immigrants. Makes the country. It's what made the country. We are not side by side with how, and I, I got to tell you, I got this sent to me, and I checked it, and I think it's right. I'm not 100% sure of it right, but I think it's right. That in 2023, 3.2 million came through in 23. In 22, 2.7 million, 2.76 million. 21, 1.956, and years before that, we never were but above a million. So just what in blue hell is going on out there, ladies and gentlemen? It's quite the quite, I must say. So we repeat, come one, come all. What is this about? Give me a tired and everything? But it's, you can't have what we're having here. And you do know immigration is now in front of the economy on poll numbers for the election. And there's a simple reason why. Look what's happening in cities. The costs. The unbelievable costs. The news I've been telling you about. And I know it's not the norm, but you had a bunch of them beat the hell out of a couple of cops yesterday and they let them out with no bail? What's going on? If I ran the city, they are in jail and getting deported. That's all. See ya. Go back to where you came from. Life's pretty simple. Life's pretty easy. But that's all I want to say about that. We'll have news of the day a little bit later. We want to get in right into the markets. Just a lot of jello moving on the plate. We're in the midst of earnings season. You have a lot of big movers both up and down. Uh, what more can I tell you? In the aftermarket, as I speak, just letting you know, you got Amazon, Apple, and Facebook reporting. As I speak, Facebook closed at 395. I have it at 415. But just so you know, these things change. Amazon closed at uh, 150, 160, let's call it. It's 166. So two very good reactions. Today, earlier, you had Ferrari finishes up 43. Parker Hannafin finishes up 35. Merck finished up five and change, and that's a big move for a Merck. By the way, Facebook's now up 30. Yay. 
How many shares of that do I have? 11 times 30, 50. Yeah, not bad. Yeah, they beat the hell out of Wall Street estimates. Uh, HCA Hospital gapped up yesterday. Uh, Brinker International. I believe that's Chili's. Am I correct? Brinker International is Chili's and Maggiano's. I haven't been to Chili's in a very long time. They have a, one on Lake Mary Boulevard. They do have some pretty good fajitas, may I state that for a record. You have Eaton. You spell it E-A-T-O-N. Uh, that was up 18 today. It's just been quite the strong out there, ladies and gentlemen. That's the best way I can explain it. Quite the strong out there. Of course, there's the other side of the coin because we're in the midst of earnings season. On the downside, we'll just throw a few at you. How about uh, Meritage Homes? Down 7%. Aflac, down 8%. Qualcomm, 7%. I can go on and on. So there's a bunch both ways. A bunch both ways. But on the whole, good reactions. But what I really want to start with, and I want you to listen carefully, because we have the secret sauce. No, no, really. We have the secret sauce. And all you got to do is look at pictures you know, what we do is look at a photo album for familiar faces. And it's been very simple. Ignore the Fed. Watch yields. Ignore the Fed. Watch yields. What yield? The 10-year yield, which basically is your mortgages and other loans, and really is what I call the market yield. It's what the market watches the most. It has been the bear market yields, which means the bond market's been in a bull market in the since no, early November. And recently, the 10-year yield hit a low of 3.785 and has bounced up to 4.2. Do you know why it did that? Because it was stretched and extended to the downside. That's why. Simple as that. It was too far, stretched, extended to the downside. So it reverted back to the declining, I don't want to get too technical, moving average resistance area and failed and is just rolling over badly. Yields are crumbling. And what do we know about yields? Yields down, market better. Yields up, market worse. And guess what? Yields down big today. On top of yesterday, which was down big yesterday, what the heck happened there? We don't know. But what we did say to you yesterday is quite often, quite often, whatever happens on Fed Day, the opposite happens the next day. That's what happened today. Not 100%, but pretty darn good. What were we down? 300 and 300 yesterday? We were up 369 today, up 200 on the NASDAQ, 197. So the band plays on with some warts. I don't even want to discuss the warts right now. Just enough good going on with the market, and we leave it at that. And in the aftermarket, Again, some fireworks. Amazon closed at 159.67. It's 165.50. But the big one, Facebook, Meta, closed at 394.78. I'm not making this up. 437. It's up 41 points in the aftermarket, 11%. And as you know, that's one of the names we bought. When we started jumping into the big tech, 
And as you know, we have absolutely no clue how things are going to react in earnings and what the reports are. But it looks like whatever Meta said, market be happy. But not just that. You have other things going on in the aftermarket. You got Deckers up in the aftermarket. As I said, you got Amazon. I'm seeing Symbol Team up in the aftermarket. So good tone today and good tone in the aftermarket. We're still waiting for Apple, which reports in about 15 minutes. Up next, we'll go through everything. I'm Gary. This is the one and only Investor's Edge. Hi, I'm Gary Kalbaum, host of the nationally syndicated radio show Investor's Edge. We're not just handsome radio people. We manage investors' money for a living, specializing in fee-based discretionary money management. No big commissions, just a fee on the assets that's managed. We also provide a full range of personalized services, including retirement planning, fixed income, and educational needs, all to assist you in achieving your financial goals. Understanding not all individuals have the same needs, we'll carefully evaluate your personal goals to determine a proper investment strategy. If your current approach to investing is not getting you to where you would like to be, call us to make an appointment for a complimentary portfolio review. The number to call is 888-422-5559. That's 888-422-5559. That's 888-422-5559. Investment advisory services offered through Kaltbaum Capital Management. It's time to switch on the integrator units and get the brain cells working. You're listening to... Hey, this promises to be fun. Investor's Edge. The last bastion of quality programming. With Gary Kaltbaum. It doesn't get better than this. And welcome once again to Investor's Edge. And let me be a little repetitive. By the way, Facebook's up 50 on the day now. Unbelievable, some of the moves for big names. It's up uh, 45 and change in the aftermarket after being up five today. We are big believer. We are a big believer in correlations. We are a big believer in reactions. Throughout the year, the years, reactions and correlations have changed. One of the most important books you can ever read is by one of the great technicians of all time, Stan Weinstein. The book is The Secrets of Profiting in Bull and Bear Markets. It is a master class on technical analysis. He does things based on stages. And he's just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Widely followed. Huge institutional following. But in his book, which is many years old, it was the GM indicator. As General Motors went, the market went. Correlations. Characteristics. I remember years ago, it was the money supply. Whenever the money supply came out, the market made a move based on this, that, and the other thing. We've had moments, well, we had the nifty 50 in the 70s. You've had the magnificent 7 as of late, which is really the magnificent 6 because Tesla's toast right now. You had the briefcase indicator. Don't get me started. Alan Greenspan. Did he have a briefcase or not? That's how crazy my business is. Pretty much over time, interest rates have always mattered. The direction of interest rates, the direction of the Fed. 
But I must tell you, currently, I've really never seen the 10-year yield so closely correlated to the market. And you don't need me to tell you. Go get a chart of the 10-year yield and the S&P. Bottoms when it tops, tops when it bottoms. And I mean almost perfectly. And we're having at it again. We're having at it again. If the 10-year yield would have popped above those resistance areas of just a few days ago, horse of a different color. But bear markets have very simple characteristics. Bear markets have a declining line called the 50-day moving average, which, by the way, is just price. Take the last 50-day closes, add them up, divide by 50, you get a smoothed out line. And in bear markets, price rallies into it and fails. In bear markets. In bull markets, price is ascending above an ascending 50-day and pullbacks are contained. The 10-year yield was contained. Simply put, was contained right at amazingly so again it's really uncanny right at the 50 day moving average we're showing it every day every night in our webcasts when that correlation changes will change Eventually, it will. We always think in, think interest rates will matter. We'll always think interest rates will matter. But right now, lockstep. And I must state for the record, and you know I can't stand the Fed. I actually think... They have something to do with interest rates coming down, which is actually good news. And that is, they're being stubborn on their fight against inflation that they caused by staying high on rates, much higher than the market. And maybe, just maybe, the market, the free market is saying, hey, they're really fighting it. They're they're doing everything possible, just throwing it out there. Thus, the bond market continues to behave, rates come down, and when rates come down, the cost of capital comes down, the cost of loans come down, the cost of mortgages come down. Big help. Add in oil prices cooperating, big help. The two most important factors in the markets are those two. And I think that's what happened today. Thus, though, we think what happened today is what's happened many times. The opposite, the next day or whatever the Fed day does. If the Fed day is a big down day, next day's up. A big up day, the next day's down. We think we got that today. Very good day today. Good reaction to earn two very important earnings after the close in Amazon and Facebook, which is and Fuego, and we're just waiting on Apple, where I must tell you, I have no clue what Apple does in the aftermarket, but I will tell you that many analysts have been down on it. Another analyst came out yesterday saying iPhone's 15% lower. Valuations are in the trees, but estimates are to be an acceleration of their recent numbers. So that'll come out in the next uh, 10, 12 minutes. And I think we'll have it for you as we're pre-taping in the 4 o'clock hour. And let me state for the record. I wish we had more of a pullback. I would have rather have more down days in here. We'll see what happens. Now, something else stuck out today. I do want to let you know. But actually had a decent comeback by the close. They're blasting the regional banks. 
Remember yesterday, we told you, it looks like they topped out. They were crumbling them today, and they were still down decently today, but finished about halfway down of the day. And that's because the market lit up like a pinball machine towards the close. We're going to be watching them closely. Let me tell you why. I don't know if you've been reading about this. Commercial real estate has some problems. Just because of the COVID and the not going back into the office, there's a lot of woe out there. And prices for buildings have crumbled in many of the big cities. We'll be on watch. Up next, more on these markets. See what happens with Apple. News of the day. This is the one and only Investor's Edge. To. America is talking. <laughs> Investor's Edge. He's got to be pleased with that. The crowd is just on its feet here. He's a Cinderella boy. With Gary Coltbaum. Comes highly recommended. You're going to feel better if you talk to him. So, uh, on Facebook, they announced $50 billion increase the share repurchase. They announced the dividend for the first time. They and, and they just beat pretty handily and just a very big move in the aftermarket. But, of course, that can change overnight. They got the conference call also, and we'll see what that brings. I'm looking at Amazon right now. That's up about 7 bucks, 8 bucks in the aftermarket. That's a pretty good move. So I would gather the NASDAQ 100 in the morning should be okay as long as Apple does not crap out when it reports in the next 10 minutes. But just overall, good stuff. Restaurant stocks better. I would own, just so you know and how I think, I would definitely own Chipotle right here. On Monday, it had this perfect, remember, photo album for familiar faces. A perfect looking move above range. Picture perfect. Couldn't buy it. Why? They were port in days. I have a rule. I have a simple rule. I am not Karnak the Magnificent. I have no idea if something's going to gap down on earnings, and I just don't want to play earnings roulette. Of course, the breakout was at around 2350. It's already 2442. It sounds great when you say 92 points, but it's only 4%. But I would have loved to have been in it. But no thank you. Again, We have a certain thought process, and that thought process is, oh, what if it doesn't go up on the breakout? And what if it's earnings day? I'm certainly not going to hold it if I don't have big cushion. And you never can predict big cushion in just a matter of days. So what do we do? We take the step back. That's all. Simple as that. Anyway, we'll await Apple. If... They get the big gap up. Ooh, we're going to be ready on that, ladies and gentlemen. We've owned Apple many times in the past, but many times it will just sit there for months and months and months and months and do nothing. And my big worry, just so you know, valuations in the trees, but this sometimes the market doesn't care about valuation. I got to tell you, the whole market's valuation is too high right now. But again, the market doesn't care. When the market decides to care, we shall know it. It'll wake us up. We'll be ready. And that is all. Hey, in the news, well, since we've been covering Oakland so much, we might as well continue because now Denny's is closing their Oakland restaurant that's been open for 54 years, and they are simply stating... We're scared crap for us and our employees because it's the wild, wild west out there and nobody's doing squat about it. Now, I didn't know this, but I just found out 
a finally as a campaign has begun to recall the city's mayor and the district attorney and I'm, I'll bring up the politics they're both liberal Democrats who've spoken repeatedly about their desire to tackle the inequities they say helps cause crime schmucks two schmucks They're destroying this city with a single thought process of kissing the rear end of the criminals while scaring the living heck out of your citizens into hiding and closing shop and having their own security. Insanity runs amok, ladies and gentlemen. Unbelievable. Which takes me to the next. What have we told you about Washington, D.C.? Well, we have told you about the carjackings. That they actually are putting out flyers telling people how to be careful of carjackers. And the reason being is they're not doing anything about them. Well, some are being shot, some people are dead, and amazingly, the D.C. Attorney General had the grapefruits to state, and I quote, we cannot prosecute and arrest our way out of the crime spiral. What? You idiot. That is how you get out of the crime spiral you make sure the crooks know they're gonna pay the action the guy who's supposed to protect the citizens are saying we cannot prosecute and arrest and he still has his job if these people are elected officials And why do we cover this? Because it's happening in more than one place. And I'm looking at a picture of this guy. And I'm not a violent person, but I do go to professional wrestling matches. And I really think somebody should give him a clothesline or something. Got to wake them up. You know, Mike Gill is an innocent man that was just, just shot. Married father of three. In daylight. And the 28-year-old suspect carjacked three other people until the police finally got him in a shootout and they killed him. D.C., Oakland, Chicago, what are these, what are they all run by? People that coddle criminals. It's insane. Speaking of that, in the news, uh, two of the squad members, uh, Corey Bush and Rashida Tlaib, you know, in the House, they put out a vote, and basically the vote was this. We're going to bar Hamas from coming to the United States, which, of course, they're not going to let them. It's more of ceremonial, but it's to make a point. We're pissed off about all this. Uh, These two voted against it. So are they voting for Hamas to come to the United States? That would be my question. These people are two of 435 in the House that get to vote on this future because a district runs amok and votes them in. Yeah. Yeah. Let's vote to let Hamas into the United States. Yay. And le- well, not lastly, I got a couple more things I want to cover. Taylor Swift, Super Bowl commercials, guess what's going on? Amazingly. Elf Cosmetics, Dove, NYX Pro Makeup. You know what those three have in common? They've never advertised in the Super Bowl. They now are. 
Do you know why? Do you know why they're spending millions? Because they know a lot of Swifties are going to be watching the Super Bowl this year because Taylor Swift is going to be flying in from Japan to watch her loved one, Travis Kelsey, play the game. I love that. Capitalism just growing leaps and bounds because one woman and her huge amount of followings. I love that. And I know there's some whining, complaining about her and some doofuses also. I forgot what doofus came out. And so, oh, it was Vivek Ramaswamy says it's a plot. The NFL plotted KC to be in the Super Bowl and for Biden to do this, that, and the other thing at the Super Bowl to win votes. Yeah, this guy was running for president. You know we're into not into too much conspiracy theories, unless it's run by Hillary Clinton, who's a who's great at it. Anyway, just letting you know, I think that's pretty cool. I think CBS is doing the Super Bowl this year. And last but not least, who have we complained about here? We mentioned them a few times. Democratic hack. John Podesta, he was given $380 billion of our tax dollars, $380 billion of our tax dollars. I'll explain for what and what next for this man. Nothing personal. I'm Gary. This is the one and only Investor's Edge. Listening to. What are we waiting for? Well, what are you waiting for? One, two, ready, go. Action! Investor's Edge with Gary Kaltbaugh. And welcome once again to Investor's Edge. So the uh, big Biden slush fund, six point seven, six point eight trillion of federal spending this year. Yeah, what's what's. What's a trillion here, a trillion there? Bigger than any year above COVID. The Royal Scam, which was a Steely Dan album. Voted on by the Republicans. Better known today as the Republicans. John Podesta was handed $380 billion of our tax dollars to dole out for climate. And we've explained to you, somewhat sarcastically, but somewhat truthfully, that we are sure many donors and friends of Podesta and the Bidens are in Delaware right now, opening up corporations of startup green energy companies so they can go to John Podesta and get millions of bucks of grants that never have to be paid back. And I don't think I'm being sarcastic. All in the name of climate, which we know is a scam, not the fact that the climate changes. It does. But the scam is they started with global cooling. Then we warmed up. They changed it to global warming. Then we cooled down. They sat in a room, got some advertiser in there. Hey, we need help. How do we how do we do this? We're looking like doofuses here. How do we how do we get around this? Oh, let's come up with a moniker that we can never be wrong. And what did they come up with? They came up with climate change. So if it's cold out, it's climate change. If it's hot out, it's climate change. If there's floods, if there's rains, if there's winds, there's tornadoes or hurricanes or ice or snow, it's climate change. And they can market it to unwitting people that think that these people, since they're in power, they know what they're talking about, but it's all about your wallet. That's all it is. It's all about mucho dinero. 
By the way, I got to stop Apple reported. Blah, 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 blah. The stock is down $3 in the aftermarket. But Facebook is up $60 for the day, 55 in the aftermarket. How's that? And needless to say, it's one of my sizable positions. Yay. Anyway, back on this. So now they've named John Podesta as the climate envoy. Really? Because that other shill, John Kerry, stepped down to be a part of his campaign. Anyway, and he was one Podesta that was embroiled in the Hillary email saga that Hillary should have been charged with. But of course, she's on the right side of politics in the judicial system, so nothing ever happens to her. She can bleach bit and she can erase and this, that and the other and destroy and she's good. Anyway, I digress. So just letting you know. Hide your wallets. That's all. I don't know if you know this, but the head honcho top dog big cheeses around the globe have been calling for global taxes on the climate. Just letting you know. And not one of them has answered my question. What is this going to do? Just so you know, we have had a green movement for a couple of decades, three decades, and it's been going well. And it's been a great partnership between people and business. Who needed government? You know, L.A. realized they had all this smog. So businesses got together and people and they fought it. And there's no smog in L.A. anymore. Green movement. You see what's going on in the green movement. It's happening because it's happening. None of us want pollution. But we don't need to extract money from others to get it done. They do. Remember. Remember I did the Jefferson quotes yesterday? One of the big things was about creating a crisis. If there's no crisis, they can't extract. So there's always something. Remember that. And amazingly, how people fell for the con when a Al Gore says in 10 years we're doomed, 17 years later he's not being called on the carpet for it, but has made a couple of hundred million dollars with green companies... You get where I'm going? Shouldn't he be questioned? No. He's being questioned about the climate. Look at the wind. Look at the rain. It's worse than ever. No, it's not. We've had floods. We've had cold. We've had bad winters. We've had bad hurricanes. We've had bad tornadoes. Then they go away. And then they come back. And they try to convince you they're going to be able to control all this. It's a lie. I have news for you. The only person that can stop hurricanes is Superman. And figment of our imagination. That's all. So we bring these things up because this has everything to do with long term, you, your money, the markets, the economy, everything in between. Because if they continue to stay in power and able to really ram that power home, I can't imagine what they're going to try. In California right now versus a Florida, there's a 14% state tax if you're too successful on top of a gargantuan gas tax that Florida doesn't have. So there's big differences going on here on we the people or we the government. And I worry that if it ever gets spread across the whole country, oh my goodness gracious, and the people that run California, I got news for you, they're just lucky. They got this beautiful state, it's magnificent, so many beautiful areas, and they take advantage of the people there and their hard work. 
and hopefully one day they're going to get it. That it's them running the st- state, not a man or a woman. That all said, uh, quite the aftermarket. Apple's down a couple of bucks now, so but that's not really affecting things. You have a great evening. Drive carefully. When you get home, do like we do. Uh, make sure you hug your family. Make sure you hug your children. They will feel better. You will feel better. I should be on with Cavuto tomorrow, Fox Business Network. Don't miss that. Best Best guy I know in business. Have a great night, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. This has been Investor's Edge with Gary Kaltbaum on BizTalk. To listen to past episodes or to get in contact with Gary, go to GaryK.com. That's GaryK.com.